Hi, I want to talk to you for a few minutes about uh, one of our courses. It's called Spiritual and Psychological First Aid. You see a lot of uh, uh, people talking about PFA, and that's Psychological First Aid. Um, so we talk about Psychological First Aid, but we also talk about the spiritual dimensions of that and how that people can tap into to their own spiritual and religious resources to help them in times of crisis and how we do an assessment of that with people. So this course um, is our foundational course for the Institute for Compassionate Care. It's also a partner course with the International Critical Incident Stress Foundation. And um, it's one of our newer courses. It's been out for a few years. It was piloted for probably three or four years before that. Um, but it was officially released in ICSF in 2017 to the general public. And we're doing our first trained trainer actually at the end here of, of 2017. So um, let's talk about this course and where, where it fits in. So this course is a very practical course. Um, it's designed to help people at the front lines of human suffering, whether that's in a community of faith, whether that's in a disaster setting, whether that's in a school, wherever, or people come to just use it in their daily life and in their workplace or with their friends and family. But there's a lot that we can do. And one of the things that we know um, from the history of human beings is that we have always relied on people around us to help us. It's very critical. It's very important. We need that. We desire that. We crave that. And one of the things that I've seen after 30 years of doing this professionally is when people are in a state of crisis and they have other support systems that come around them and help them, or even if they don't access that help, they know are available to them, they do better in the long run. Okay. There's also, though, a lot of times where I find people who have been through some really tough situations and they had people around them who were trying to help. And sometimes these are professionals. Sometimes these are communities of faith and they were doing all the wrong things and it actually was making it worse. And so this class really talks about what is helpful. So there's been a lot of research into the, what's in this class, but a, a lot of this comes from sitting in the seat of the suffering alongside with people and then going through my own traumas and Jennifer's own traumas. My wife and I wrote this one together. Um, and then asking people a simple question, what helped you and what did not help you and why? And so some of those things that we, we have. So, so this class starts with the first 10, it's 10 P's in this course. The first uh, P that we talk about is, is the whole element of being present, of how to be present with people, uh, what it looks like, what it doesn't look like, some of those elements of being able to be empathic and some of the characteristics and qualities for us as human beings and how to, how the we as human beings interface with somebody who's got their own stuff going on, we have our own stuff going on inside us, and how do these two worlds mesh together in a way that's helpful because there's a balance to that. Because if you haven't worked on your own stuff, you can show up in somebody else's life and you can actually cause more harm than good because it becomes all about you and you're not emotionally stable enough to help them. But we also know that people who have been through tough things, that they've gone their work, done their work and dealt with it, they have a greater capacity and have a greater level of empathy sometimes um, to help people. Otherwise, they may just put up their walls or distance and they're not able to be there emotionally available because it's too close to their own stuff. So we talk, talk about that stuff as well. The second thing we talk about is the P is protection. How do we protect people who are vulnerable? People who are in a state of crisis are cognitively dumbed down. They don't normally think as clearly as, as they would in other times. They need other things they can normally do on their own. So who do we need to protect against and how do we protect them? And those, so we get to that and that P. Third thing we talk about is the element of practical assistance. And this is one of the huge things of doing disaster work for the past 20, 30 years um, is at the front lines of suffering. The things that we do that are practical are immensely helpful, not to them just physically and keeping them alive, but it serves a deep uh, uh, relational piece and also feels, it feels also a deep psychological and a spiritual dimension for that. And if you look at a lot of the big elements of faith in some of the major religions, there's this old piece of we are mandated to out of our religious and faith beliefs and our spiritual beings to help other people who are in a state of crisis. So the practical assistance is huge in this course. The next piece of this talks about the perception piece of this. How does that person perceive this event that they are in? And as I've done this now around the world in different places,
so it's not just here in the United States, but you find different cultures view events very differently, where one person views something traumatic as a trauma, other people may not to the same degree. So we talk about that person's perception, as well as our own perception of how we view that and how those two worlds collide. Uh, another thing we talk about is defining the problem. It's very critical because what people are, are concerned about in the state of crisis, you know, immediately following a critical incident in the first few hours may be very different as a month, you know, two months or a year later. So uh, as we move from psychological first aid into long-term care, what does that look like and when do these things come up? Um, the other thing is we talk about is where that state of crisis may actually hit. A lot of times we confuse the actual critical incident and where the state of crisis develops. So people think psych first aid happens only in those first few hours maybe after an event. Well, no, they may be numb and functioning okay, but then they have a full-blown psychological crisis, you know, a month later. So we talk about that and some of the impacts of that. Uh, we also talk about psychological resiliency. One of the things with, with people, we as human beings are naturally resilient and we are designed to be able to withstand trauma and other types of events. But there's factors that really help us to be more resilient and things that help uh, that, that may hinder that. And so the things that we do with other people do matter. The things that we believe, the, the spiritual practices, the, the relationships around us really can help or hinder in the level of, of psychological resiliency. And then we also talk about post-traumatic growth in that as well. That's a step beyond it. Uh, we also talk about the next P is about processing. And that is really about how do you hear the story? What are, how stories are sacred? And how there's a balance between helping people to process that and listen to them at the same time being available to them, but at the same time not keeping them immersed in a trauma story, which we know that can also cause some long-term psychological problems as well and not allow them to move, move forward. Uh, we talk about purpose, and purpose is really about hope. In the middle of crisis, how how people are helped, things that they are given, the things that are done for them, and uh, the, how people come alongside them can really help to enhance that and can really bring hope through a comparative or companioning type of relationship. Um, the next P is talking about preparing, and that is about how do you prepare people for the journey ahead of them? Um, how do you, information is power. And so we get into that of how do you help people um, to, to prepare themselves emotionally, physically, spiritually spiritually, relationally, and how do they help each other. And, and giving them practical resources to explore is very important in that P. The last P is passing off. And so that whole piece of it is when you go in as a crisis responder or a chaplain or whatever your role is, and you have that, that contact with that person that may not be forever. A lot of times it's just temporary. It may be for an hour, for a few minutes or whatever. If you stop on the side of the road to help somebody who's just had a car accident, but then how do you pass them off to a, to a, a other existing community of care? And what do those look like? This is the cool part about this class. Because a lot of times people come in and they're going through this whole class. And by the end of day two, they made other connections in the, in the class. They're thinking about their own environment that, that they work in. And they've gone out. And then they, I see them in another class maybe a year or two later or six months. And they've got involved with the police department. They've got involved with a social work agency. They, you know, they've started this in their, own, in their own church. And it's so cool to see that happen because people are stepping out of their silos, stepping out of their their own world and beginning to work together. And bottom line, this course is about making a difference in the world and helping those people around us. So if you haven't taken this course, I invite you to, to check in and see where it is. You can find more information at the International Critical Incident Stress Foundation. If you look below, you'll see some links about some upcoming classes and some other things going on as well. So thank you for all that you do to make your world a better place.